Hello, it's your boy Dapper the Don, and I hope you're having a wonderful day. Today we need to talk about a problem in music, more so rap music. Now I know there are types of people on the internet where if you don't like their favorite artist, they would bust a blood vessel and wish death on you for their god. If you are one of those people, the best thing I can say is, this is just the Don's opinion, you don't have to agree. If it doesn't apply, let it fly. Now let's get into it. While it is important to avoid generalizations and respect differing opinions, a common sentiment expressed by some listeners is the belief that rap music has experienced a perceived decline over the years. Many attribute this perceived deterioration to a shift in the genre's thematic and musical essence. Traditionally, rap was rooted in social commentary, with artists using their platform to vocalize their experiences, perspectives, and struggles. Legends like Tupac Shakur and the notorious Big garnered immense respect for their lyrical prowess and and the ability to weave intricate narratives that resonated with audiences across various socioeconomic backgrounds. However, some argue that the modern rap scene, characterized by artists like Lil Pump or Six Ike's Nine Nine, emphasizes catchy hooks and commercial viability, often sacrificing lyrical depth and storytelling. Now don't get me wrong, I don't want this to be those bra back in my days type of videos. I'm fully aware that while some people would say hip hop is dead, I feel it's more so of the mainstream. I would say I'm more accepting of the new generation than most people in my age range. My main problem with rap music now in days isn't with the new sounds, but more so with the fact that everyone sounds the same. I'm okay with people being inspired by other rappers and taking their sound and adding a twist to it. I enjoy an artist like Young Thug here and there sometimes, but we can't forget when he first came out. We said he was trying to be like Lil Wayne. Yes, now he has his own style and everything, but he's a perfect example of someone taking something and adding their twist to it. What I don't enjoy is the fact that Polo G, Lil Baby, Moneybag Yo, NBA, Young Boy, Lil Che, and Lil Durk all sound like the same person. There is absolutely nothing about these artists that stand out or is different other than their names and where they are from. They all have the same flows, use the same beats, and their music videos are all the same. And I think that this year's Double XL Freshman Cypher is a good representation of what people feel is the new copycat wave. I remember back in 2011 when I was first introduced to Double XL Freshman Cypher, an annual event organized by Double XL Magazine which focuses on showcasing up-and-coming hip-hop artists, and I was watching it because there was a rapper I was listening to who was going to be on it called Mac Miller. I remember waiting for Mac Miller part, but was instead shown a rapper from Compton whose first words rapping was... I'm beyond the most slept on, stepped on, step songs, father of rap songs, writing my wrongs, writing a book of songs, this is the word, word to the holy Quran, or whatever that's fun to Yes, once upon a time what's considered a joke to internet culture used to be the place to go when you wanted to know who was the next artist coming up. XXL introduced the world to rappers like Future, Travis Scott, Meek Mill, and Schoolboy Q. It was seen as an opportunity for the featured artists to gain more exposure and solidify their position within the hip-hop industry. It is a highly anticipated event each year, as fans and industry professionals alike eagerly await the release of the Cypher videos to see the new talent on display. But now it's something that should have died a long time ago. The last time I actually paid attention to the XXL Freshman Cypher was in 2016 and only because Denzel Curry was going to be on it. The 2016 Cypher is considered to most people as one of the best because it was the last XXL, where almost every artist actually became the next big thing, which I honestly feel is more so because the artists on there already had a fan base with a hit song or two. Regardless of the fact, I found myself listening to this year's XXL Freshman Cypher freestyles, and that shit almost brought a tear to my eye. What the hell happened to hip-hop? Listening to these air quotations, freestyles just sound like an unreleased song, or was too short and also had the same flows. I took a look at the freshman list since 2016, and every year it seems to just get worst and worst, consistently dropping trash. The rappers featured on them don't even last a year into the game because they have that one hit wonder and others would have you scratching your head as to why the hell they are even on the list. I went ahead and listened to each person on the list catalog and it was the same substance of music. I got shooters, I'm going to kill you. I got hoes and I don't believe half of those claim to be shooters and killers. One of the rappers looked like she couldn't even handle the recoil of a gun. I don't even care about the bars, to be honest with you guys. I just want to hear something different. There are people out there who hate the new path Playboy Cardi is taking with his sound moving more toward rock, but I feel like it's always good to experiment with sounds. The worst rapper to me was Lil Yachty, but then he dropped his album Let's Start Here, and I actually enjoyed it and can't wait to see where his music goes on from now. What this list shows is that people take the term if it isn't broke, don't fix it and use that to be uninspiring and drop that same copycat music. I want to be clear, these songs aren't bad, but I don't have an incentive to listen to the album when I know track one will be the next 15 tracks. 
I am grateful for artists like Tyler the Creator, Kid Cudi, and Tizo Touchdown who bring experimental sound into this genre, and even the rappers who dropped an experiment album. Kanye West Jesus is a classic to me. Just think about the rollout, the album cover, the music videos, and the performances. Kanye brought something to us that we've never got, and while yes people hated it at first, they did the same thing they did with 8. 0.8's and Heartbreak when they ended up loving something they called trash later in life. I'm going to even give prompts to Drake. Honestly, Nevermind was his best album to me since Take Care. The house music beats was a vibe to me, and I tip my hat to the fact he decided to do a 180 with what was working for him and try something different. There are many more things I have to say about music as a whole, but I wanted to at least try to keep this on XXL, so I'll end it with this. If everyone is thinking alike, then somebody isn't thinking. It is better to fail in originality than to succeed in imitation. Well, that will be all for today. If you have any topics you would like for the Don to help you with, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification. Leave a comment, like, and share the video. I'm Dapper the Don, and have a good day.